For a long time, people believed that plants don't do anything during the winter. That they just lie there under the snow cover, dormant, almost dead. But here, in the far north of Sweden, in the Arctic, Ellen Dora Pal leads a group of researchers who are about to discover that plants have a secret life, the likes of which no one has seen. And it feels as though she and her colleagues are at what explorers call the final frontier. It's really exciting. Nobody knows it. It's like the final frontier. We're moving into unknown space. Ellen wants to find out what it is that plants do during the winter, partially because it's that basic question which always drives researchers. How does life really work? And partly to understand how our changing climate with ever milder winters will change the entirety of these enormous landscapes north of the Arctic Circle. Ellen's wonder in the winter life of plants took off a few years ago, when she was investigating to see if the roots of cotton grass here actually slept during the winter. The roots of awakened plants like to draw up nitrogen from the soil. Nitrogen is their nutrition. So in late summer, Ellen added very small amounts of traceable nitrogen. By doing this, she could see that the roots continued to absorb the nitrogen well into the cold half of the year, much longer than previously thought because the above ground parts of the plants appear to be completely lifeless at that point. <laughs> the cool thing about, about finding out something like this uh, that nobody else really has looked at before uh, is that it gives you the it gives really sort of the feeling that you have been looking at the secret life of the plants that is taking place when we, when most people have left the Arctic because the winter is coming, when there's hardly any light left, uh, when there is snow and we usually don't look under the snow. Um, and then you suddenly, if you do actually see their kind of hidden life, their secret life happening there, that, that feels really cool. But did the plants perhaps continue to be active and build up nitrogen stores during the remainder of the winter season? Ah, look at this, some nice crowberry and lingonberry. Then we started to wonder, okay, what is happening in winter? Are they, are they still uh, taking up nitrogen even in the middle of winter or maybe breeding or maybe even photosynthesizing? So that's what we're actually looking at now. That's what they're measuring here today. With this bucket, any gas that leaks out of the ground will be collected. And these researchers aren't only measuring nitrogen, but carbon dioxide emissions as well. It's long been known that microbes, such as bacteria and fungi, are active in the soil during the winter and release carbon, which then rises as carbon dioxide. But Ellen's group can show that these plants are doing the same thing. Because even though plants are best known for giving off oxygen, these creatures have also built cells that breathe and release carbon dioxide. The results show that the plants are active under the snow cover, as if they lie there and breathe carefully all winter, just like at a starting gate, to then be able to take off and grow quickly in spring. These plants that, you know, they, they have no feet, they have no choice, they, they have to stay there during the winter. And they do that by actually maintaining their life functions and uh, preparing themselves for the next year, for the summer, when they can start growing and, um, and photosynthesizing. So they, they, are, they are alive under the snow. It, there's something more happening. It gives so much more of a complete picture, actually, of the life cycles of plants, when you also know what is ha happening in winter. 
Ellen's discoveries are based at the research station in Abisko, and Ellen, originally from Holland, lives up here now and has learned to enjoy it, like the sheltering slope of Mount Choma. This is the Abisko Alps, and in the middle there's Choma. It's my favorite mountain. It's very beautiful. It feels like it's protecting Abisko. Do you like it? Yes, I love it. Ellen is now increasingly able to paint a picture of the plants in winter. And for the next step, she wants to map how the entire landscape lives there under the snow. The mountain world has its own small places. Headmark with the crowberries Ellen dug up. Stony outcrops where lichens are almost the only plant to take hold and the snow often blows away. Wetter meadowlands with taller grasses and then widespread thickets of wisteria. Over millennia, the plants in all these areas have learned to prepare themselves during winter to be ready for spring. But what happens now? Is it possible to understand how the Arctic land will react now that climate change threatens to remove that protective snow layer? We're doing our experiments, getting in our first data, so we're getting a first glimpse of this sort of secret life of the plants and the microbes in the winter. Um, but how that in the end will really affect the climate, that is a bit, a bit early to say now. I hope really at the end of the project that we will be able to say more about that. 